This is a 2021 Chrysler Pacifica and this is the Pinnacle trim level and it has all wheel drive and today we're going to review it. I'll tell you about the horsepower, cargo, dimensions and safety. And I'll tell you about the interior, the controls and all the technology. But before we get started, take a moment, click that subscribe button down below. And ring that bell notification so you never miss one of our videos. That's right. So what do you say, Nate? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. From its initial launch in 1983 as an 84 model, Chrysler Corporation minivans threw down the gauntlet and changed the family transportation landscape in America forever. Initially sold only as the Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager, 1987 saw the introduction of the long wheelbase Grand Caravan and Grand Voyager models. Then Chrysler introduced the Town & Country for 1990, which was the highest trim level of the three vans and sold only in long wheelbase body length. Now, the Pacifica name was initially used on a crossover vehicle from 2004 to 2008, but Chrysler revived the name in 2017 to replace the previous long-standing name of the Town & Country minivan. This is the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica, and it's available in four gas-only trim levels, starting with the Touring at $35,495, the Touring L at $38,795, the Limited All-Wheel Drive at $48,490, and the Pinnacle All-Wheel Drive at $53,770. The Pacifica is also available in hybrid form, we have the same four trim levels, starting with the Touring at $40,295, the Touring L, $42,595, the Limited, $45,720, and the Pinnacle, $51,225. This is the Pacifica Pinnacle trim level, and it's presented here in velvet red coat, and it has a beautiful black and caramel coated, or excuse me, and caramel, not coated, but take two. And it has a beautiful black and caramel colored quilted Napa leather trimmed interior and an MSRP of $54,885. Now it is powered by a 3.6 liter Pentastar 24 valve double overhead cam V6 engine producing 287 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. It's driven by a nine speed automatic transmission and this particular one does have all wheel drive. Now, in my reviews, I always mention the horsepower and torque numbers that a vehicle has. But what does that really mean and how does it apply to how you use the vehicle? What exactly is horsepower and torque? Well, horsepower is a unit of measurement used to denote the power or rate at which work is done by an engine or a motor. Your car's horsepower denotes how quickly that work can be done with more power allowing for quicker work. Now, torque is force multiplied by distance. In the case of cars, the rotational equivalent of linear force. Essentially, it's the amount of force applied to an object with the twisting motion, such as a motor applying force to a crankshaft, which in turn rotates your tires. So what's the difference between horsepower and torque? Well, these two are very much two sides of the same coin as one goes with the other, torque being the force and horsepower being the rate at which that force is done. The difference is torque is doing the work, while horsepower is how fast that work is being done. So, now you know. All right, okay, let's take a look out front. The Pacifica does have the auto on-off bifunctional LED projector headlights with daytime running lights. And I really do like the new grill design with that nice gloss black grill and the satin chrome surround. And in the middle, you have a forward facing camera just below the large Chrysler winged logo. It also does have body colored front bumper with parking sensors. And there are LED fog lights highlighted by a little bit of satin chrome trim 
down below as well. Now those are non-functioning side air intakes and down below that is a center functional air intake with body colored lower lip or splitter if you will. Up top there is a nice clean wide uh, hood with a few subtle body lines and above that are rain detecting variable intermittent wipers and a laminated front windshield. Next up let's take a look around the side. Okay along the side these are really classic looking 20 by seven and a half inch polished five spoke aluminum wheels with gray painted pockets and they are wrapped in 245-50 HR20 all season tires. It also does have four wheel anti-lock brakes with 13.8 inch front vented brake disc and 13.3 inch solid rear brake disc. It has power assisted rack and pinion steering and the front suspension is struts and it has trailing arm with gas shocks for the rear suspension. And there is a nice satin chrome body side molding spear uh, just above the rocker panel. And these are power remote heated mirrors with auto tilt down feature. And they have the integrated LED turn signal indicators. And I like the detail of the body color trim around the uh, actual mirror surround around the glass. It also does have body color door handles with a nice classy looking chrome insert. And there is chrome belt line and side window trim with blacked out B and C pillars. This also does have the hands-free opening second row sliding doors. And let's see, I don't have the key with me. Nope, it's in the car. Uh, and the door opening is 28 inches wide and it's 42 inches tall. Up top are satin chrome low profile roof rack rails and they actually have the stow in place crossbars and it does have a tri-pane panoramic first, second, and third row glass sunroof. Let's take a look out back. Around the back, you do see the body color roof mounted spoiler and the shark fin antenna up top. This is a heated fixed rear window with integrated wiper. It is an intermittent wiper and washer, but I do think it would have looked a little bit better had they figured out and uh, engineered it to tuck it up under here where the uh, roof spoiler and the high third mount brake light is. Make it a lot cleaner look back here. This also is a hands-free power lift gate and you do see the Chrysler wing logo in the center and just below that is the rear facing camera. And these are full LED brake lights and turn signals and reverse lights. And I do like that red reflector strip that spans the width of the tailgate tying both rear light housings together. At the bottom of the tailgate, you can see the Pacifica and all-wheel drive badges. However, I do find it a bit curious that they didn't add the Pinnacle trim level badge here as well. It does have a body colored rear bumper with parking sensors, and I do like that nice satin chrome strip. And below that is a matte black panel, and out to the corner, you do have the red reflectors, and there is a single exhaust. It's hidden up under the passenger side of the rear bumper, creating a much cleaner looking lower rear bumper design. Let's take a look at the cargo area. Now in this particular version, the second row seats are captain's chairs and they do have fuel armrest. And the third row is 60-40 split power folding with powered recline. Now there is a nice flat floor inside behind the third row seats and the passenger side of the rear cargo area right over here is where you will find the 12 volt outlet and the power folding one touch rear controls. Axel had to check it out and make sure I was telling you what is right. On the driver's side there is a uh, 10 inch Harman Kardon subwoofer and there's also the uh, stow and back vacuum canister and there is a power liftgate close button as well. So shorter people don't have to reach so far to get to it. Max cargo is 140.5 cubic feet with all the seats folded. Max cargo behind the second row is 87.5 cubic feet. Maximum cargo behind the third row, thanks to that nice deep well, is 32.3 cubic feet. Cargo floor length, with the second and third row seats folded, or actually the second row seats removed, 
97 inches to the back of the front seats to the sill. Second row to the sill, 54 inches. And third row, as you see it here, to the rear sill, width length, excuse me, is 22.5 inches. Cargo width at the belt line is 47 and a half inches. Cargo width internally at the wheel houses is 48.8 inches. And cargo opening height with the third row stored, so it's completely flat floor, it's 38 inches to the ceiling. And as you see it here with the well in place and the third row seats up, you have 48.25 inches. Cargo floor, as you see it there again, the deep well, the width is 45.5 inches. And getting something off the ground into the vehicle is 28 inches. Now, some of the safety systems on this 2021 Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle are brake assist, forward collision mitigation, traction control, ABS, lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, electronic stability control, one of my favorites, blind spot warning, parking sensors, parallel and perpendicular park assist with auto stop, pedestrian emergency braking, and so very much more. These are really, really safe vehicles loaded with technology and safety. Up next, let's talk about the dimensions. Okay, front track is 68.8 inches and the rear track is 68.8 inches. Maximum width, 79.6 inches. Overall length, 204.3 inches. Has a height of 70.7 inches and it rides on a wheelbase of 121.6 inches. Ground clearance, 5.4 inches. Approach angle, 14 degrees. Departure angle, 18.6 degrees. And breakover or ramp angle is 13 degrees. Overall curb weight, 4,987 pounds, and it does have a maximum payload of 1,313 pounds, and maximum towing when properly equipped is 3,600 pounds. Its turning circle, 40.2 feet, and it has a 19 gallon fuel tank capacity. So, how does the Chrysler Pacifica rate for safety? Well, IIHS overall rating for the frontal crash has been ranked as superior and National Highway Traffic Safety Administration overall rating is five out of five stars. Its performance is zero to 60 in 7.4 seconds, standing quarter mile, 15.6 seconds, has a top speed of 120 miles per hour and 60 to zero braking in a pretty relatively short 119 feet. Well, what about its appearance? I, I think it's a stylish looking van and I do like the refreshed front grille and that nice rounded front end with those swept LED headlights. Warranty, basic warranty, three years, 36,000 miles. Powertrain warranty, five years, 60,000 miles. Roadside assistance, five years, 60,000 miles and economy 17 city 25 highway and 20 combined with a projected 380 mile cruising range now and it also does have an energy impact score of 16.5 barrels of regular gasoline per year and it does emit 7.4 tons of greenhouse gas emissions per year as well now let's take a look inside, but before we do, make sure to check out my notes in the description down below. And please take a minute, give us a like, leave a comment, and click on that subscribe button down below. Okay, Nate, what do you say? Show the folks inside this beautiful van. Take it away. Stepping inside here, you have got this beautiful uh, caramel colored Napa leather uh, on the door here. It, it continues over here on the seats. The seats got this nice quilted stitching. They are very, very comfortable. They are 10 way, uh, they are 12 way power, excuse me, uh, with a four position lumbar included in that. And they uh, are heated and ventilated. Now, back to the door here. You have got a uh, storage area right in here. You have got uh, your lock and unlock buttons, your window lockout, 
You've got auto up and down all four windows. And then, of course, you have your left, right mirror controls and then your uh, mirror folding button. Uh, up here, you've got a two-person memory setting right here, as well as a physical uh, lock unlock button. And you have uh, ample storage down here in the door, as well as the bottle holder, which works very well. And one of your 20 Harman Kardon speakers. Uh, there are the seat controls themselves. And you do have an umbrella storage area right here. It's even labeled for you. Okay. Over underneath the center console, you have a nice storage area. It's even got a, it's com, com, it is got a division in it, so you got two separate areas. Okay, uh, you got your foot pedals down here. You have your uh, lights, nice large footrest. Then of course you have your hood release. You have your light switch right here. This does have auto lights, including auto high beam and low beam. This uh, rotary knob will adjust the ambient lighting. When I say ambient lighting, it doesn't switch colors or anything, but there is some nice lighting inside of the uh, door handle areas right here that will light up. And there's a very, very soft light that comes down from the top up here, kind of bays this area down here. And that's what that controls. This one controls whether your lights come on, uh, uh, your dome lights come on or not when your doors are open. It adjusts the uh, sensitive or the brightness on the dashboard, of course. Uh, and that's what that's for. The steering wheel is a tilt and telescope and that is manual and that adjustment is right here. Now behind the steering wheel you do have your uh, seek, seek buttons right here as well as your favorite button and then on the other side of the steering wheel you have the same button but the up and down uh, is volume and then the middle push button uh, is for switching sources. All right, It is a push chart that's located right down here. Okay, on the uh, driver's information screen, you've got an RPM on the left, uh, followed by a engine temperature digital gauge. And then over on the far right, you got your speedometer with your digital fuel gauge. And then you have a whole bunch of information you can manipulate in the middle. And we have a whole other video that goes into how to do that and how to control the uh, infotainment screen. Coming back from the dashboard, of course, you, right behind the steering wheel is typical of Chrysler. On the right-hand side, you have got volume up and down, as well as a source button in the middle. And then over on the left, you have a scan and seek, and then you've got a, um, and then the middle, and then the button in the middle does your favorites. Okay. Uh, on the steering wheel, basically on the left hand side here where these arrows are, this is what controls your driver's information screen. You've got a phone on, phone off, you've got your voice command, and then over on the far right, you've got all of your cruise control buttons. Okay, you got set, resume, uh, either button works for set, and then cancel. And then down here, you have another cruise control button followed by a gap setter. All right. Uh, the steering wheel itself is heated. It's uh, it got a leather uh, cover on it. It feels very comfortable and it was comfortable to drive in. All right, uh, moving over to the infotainment screen here. This is a 10 inch screen. Uh, it's got a 900 watt sound system. It's a Harman Kardon 20 speaker, including a subwoofer. Uh, and it sounds really good. You have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, AM and FM radio, Sirius XM, and you can use Alexa on this as well. Now, uh, we've got, again, another video that will explain all of the content in there, and you can uh, look through our list and see that video and click on and watch that if you want that specific information. Uh, but it's a very nice system. Down below that, you have a rotary uh, shift knob, and the biggest thing that I had to adjust to is I'm used to, on these uh, rotary dials, there's a push to park, and this doesn't have that. That just has a park button. And then over here, you've got two physical buttons for your infotainment screen. You've got a volume and a power. And uh, when you hit power on this, everything on the screen goes off. It's off. Okay. Uh, over here, you've got a tune and scroll. Okay, you can see the stuff changing on the screen here as I go through. And then I can press that to enter. Okay, down below that, you have physical controls for your climate. The only button you don't have is sync, and that is located in the screen. Okay, while we're up here, I'm gonna show you the camera system here. This has a 360 uh, camera system. So here's our backup view here. You've got dynamic swivel guidelines. Um, here right here, I've got a little wider view in the back. Here I've got a wide view in the front, and here I've got a narrow view in the front. And there's kind of like my trailer backup camera.
Now directly below that, this does have the rear entertainment system. So this is the Blu-ray DVD player, as well as your media port for a USB. So this is where you could run content to the rear screens from a USB. You can also watch a video if you're park in this screen. Now if I push this forward, you've got a wireless charger right down here. You've got a storage area and then you've got two USB-Cs, two USB-As and an auxiliary 3.5 millimeter input jack. Directly behind that you have two cup holders um, and at night these are illuminated with the lights. There's just a faint glow around the rim there. It's rubberized. Okay. Coming back from that, you've got a nice uh, center armrest. It's very, very soft, very nice and wide. If I open it up, you have a pretty good storage area with a removable rubber mat, coin storage, and then you've got a 12-volt outlet that operates if the car's running. And then you again have a USB-C and a USB-A port. Moving over to the glove compartment, this is a lockable glove compartment, okay? And it's decent size. It's plastic on the inside. There's no felt or anything, but it's a decent size. Coming up to the mirror here, this is an automatic dimming rear view mirror. And then up here in the ceiling, this is where your um, sunroof controls are right here to open it, to tilt it, to slide it. And then this button over here is for your shade. Open. This is a conversation mirror that we have seen in Chrysler's before. Back here, you have your sunglass storage or glass storage. And then this is all your buttons for your, your doors and stuff. So here's your left sliding door, your right sliding door. You can set it to open both doors at the same time. This is your light switch. They're all LED lights in here. And then you can open your tailgate. Okay, that's the front row. Let's step into the second row. Okay. So stepping into the second row, you have the same beautiful Napa quilted leather. Uh, these are heated seats, and the heat button is located in the door itself, okay? And then um, you have some of your speakers back here, of course, for your Harman Kardon sound system. Now this button up here will automatically close the sliding door, and there's one on both sides. This button down here will automatically push the driver's seat or the passenger, there's one on both sides, uh, up far, you know, far enough to make it comfortable like for you to get in and out and then you push it again and it slides back. Now, when you're driving, that button doesn't function. So the uh, caps and stairs themselves do uh, slide forward and back and of course with the lever on the, the right, uh, left or right side, depending on the seat, they do uh, tilt. Okay. Uh, also in the door, of course, you do have a window shade that you can pull up and hook on both sides. In fact, all four windows have that in the back here. And then you, and in addition that you have a physical unlock, unlock button, you've got bottle storage in the door, and they do have a physical handle that you can just pull and the door also automatically opens. So a couple of different ways to open the door. Now, in this particular trim level, the seats on the second row are not still and go. The still and go is here, there's a slot, but it's just storage. So uh, also inside here between the two uh, storage areas, there's uh, a tire mobility kit. So you can pump up your tires with that. Okay. But the seats are too big to fit in there. So they're not still and go. To, to get the seat to flip down completely, you have a button right here, just a, this lever that you can pull down. If you're in the back, you can pull this lever. Okay, and then the seat folds flat. Okay. So if you pull this front lever right here, this is how you're going to remove the seat. So you pull it and you lift from the back. And then if you continue, then the seat comes up. You can slide it backwards and lift it right up and take it out. And both captain's chairs are removable. Now to get the seats back up again, you just simply pull this lever on the side or this one here and just put the seat back up. Yes. Okay. So uh, right behind the, the, uh, the seat on the driver's side, there is a built-in vacuum. So there's a door that you can open, and in there you've got two accessory wands that you can hook to the end of the hose. And then right above that you actually have the hose. And if you pull that out, press the power button, it turns on. Now, the actual hose itself is stored in here, and there's a little, you gotta kind of push up. But the actual hose itself is stored in the drawer here. Uh, now that I have that open, you also have two cup holders right there, and it locks in place. So then you gotta click it again, it locks in place again at this stage, and then you can push it all the way in. You've also got a, a deep storage area here. It would work well for uh, phones. Okay, in, in terms of uh, knee room here, I've got plenty. I've adjusted the seat a couple different times. It's, it's back a little farther than, than I normally would have it, but 
Um, in general, I find that I have about three inches between myself and the seat in front of me where it's comfortable. Okay. You do have a nice little storage pocket for your TV remote controls that's on each side. You've got storage for your earphones and then you've got bag holders or it could be a purse holder. But those are really nice, they're built in. This does have the rear entertainment screen. They, they are 10 inch screens and they just fold up and they will power on. You've got uh, HDMI connection here. You've got a uh, USB charge port and a 3.5 millimeter jack uh, audio for the earphones if you want to use those earphones instead. You got a grab handle. And then on the passenger side, you have your uh, controls for the third part of your tri climate control system okay let's step into the third row okay to get in the third row uh, you can just take the lever that's on the side of the seat pull it up like this and it just slides forward and it actually gives you a, an ample amount of space to get in here so one of the more comfortable uh, third rows I've been able to step into let me pull the seat back all right, so sitting in the back, there are a couple of things I noticed right away. First of all, this seat is fairly far back. Um, it's, it's where I was when I was sitting in, in the second row. And I still have, I mean, I have two, at least two inches of leg room. Also, the seats extend much further out than I, than I think I've seen in, in some of the third row seating. So as an adult, two adults in here would be fairly comfortable. You've got air vents in the ceiling. You have got reading lights on either side. And then I can actually have a power button right here where um, I can uh, raise or lower my backrest. Power. So there we go. Power recline. All right. And then I have the same button over there. And then on that side, I have another USB-A and a USB-C. In addition to that, both sides have these window shades that you can pull up and you can click in. And then you got this really cool uh, sunroof right here. It's got a manual sliding shade. You just kind of pinch it to, uh, to get it to release there. And then uh, up in the ceiling here, this is where the fan cam is located. But overall, whoops, I'm kind of tilted back for far. Now, these seats will fold into the floor. And in the back, there are power buttons. They are a 60-40 split, so you can just fold them individually, but they'll fold flat into the floor, giving you the, all this space for, for storage here, back here in luggage. As far as where everything is laid out in the vehicle, well, you know, the infotainment is being slanted towards the driver. You got uh, a whole bunch of uh, controls right on the steering wheel, including voice command. In fact, you don't even have to use the button. You can just, you can name the system and then say, hey, the name of the system, and it comes on. Not only that, but there's a little button for the passenger to use the system so that the vehicle knows if the command is coming from the driver or somebody else in the car so it won't mistake it. In um, terms of parking, this is very easy to park, despite it's, you know, the fact that it's a, you know, it's a, it's a minivan, uh, so it's slightly longer than, say, my uh, mid-sized SUV. Um, it's very easy. Um, you've, first of all, you've got a, a 360 camera system, which is excellent, along with some little dynamic guidelines, but you also have park assist, and it will do a parallel park or perpendicular park, and uh, basically you run the gear selector and the brake. That's it for my ride. Next up, Rob's going to take it for a ride and give us his view. Okay, my turn in the Pacifica van. Thought I would give you a little bit different angle than we usually do. And it's a little bright at this angle, so bear with me. Interior fit and finish. I think they've done a very, very, very nice job on the design of this vehicle and the look and the fit and the finish in, in the inside. Personally, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the uh, caramel colored seats. I think they're a little too orange for my taste, but that's my own personal opinion. All the dashboard trim and the door pockets, you've got nice soft touch materials everywhere. You've got piano black and, and some brushed uh, chrome on the wheel and on the center stack. It's very, very well put together. These have a lot more capability uh, it has all the technology and safety features uh, that the big giant SUVs have. So if you're checking out new cars and you need lots of cargo and you need to haul lots of folks, definitely put this minivan on your shopping list. 
Well, that's our review of the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle, and we appreciate you spending some time with us. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and please click on that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.